extra income is not only helpful but uh, necessary. You know, back in 2008 when the market tanked, all I had was our savings and uh, they were cut about in half. Where I had been after all those years with salary and, and benefits and things was not what I was going to get um, if I stayed here. Um, but also at the same time, I'm looking at this, I still had kids in school, I had you know, bought a house, all the things that kind of hold you to a, a place. You know, can I manage to continue to work this many hours, these many, this many jobs? My mind says I, I can, I will, I have to. In 2022, the New York Times and Harvard School of Public Health reported that the average retirement age in the United States is 65 years old. At the same time, they noted that the average life expectancy is only 76. This means that many Americans spend more than half of their lives working before they can enjoy about 11 years of retirement, assuming they can remain healthy enough to do so. Not just in the U.S., but phenomena like this happens around the world, affecting 99% of the world's population while painting a bleak picture of life after retirement. The majority of my audience is between the ages of 24 and 34, so imagine that you would be working from 9 to 5 every single workday for 30 to 40 years until you are retired at the age of 65. Sounds like a nightmare, doesn't it? And by the age of 65, most of us will still be averagely poor to afford the lifestyle of our dreams. This is a video on why most people will work until they die. We all work for two main reasons. To enjoy the finer things in life, like the latest gadgets, exotic vacations, and dining at fancy restaurants, and, on the flip side, to cover the basics and deal with necessary debts such as mortgages and car loans. Back in the 1930s, the typical American house mortgage lasted anywhere from 5 to 15 years. Contrast that with today's norm of a 30-year mortgage, and you'll see just how things have changed. Just recently, a 40-year mortgage option was introduced, though it's only accessible to folks with lower monthly incomes. So picture this, in 2023, you kickstart your career at 23 years old and hope to buy your first home at 25 if you manage to save up for a down payment. But what follows is a harsh reality check. Your hard-earned savings take a massive hit due to the sky-high monthly mortgage payments, a burden that doesn't ease up until you hit 55. In today's world, becoming a homeowner isn't just about making a significant financial commitment. It's also about signing up for a long-term journey that can have a profound impact on your life and career. This extended period of financial commitment for home ownership often leads many to ponder whether they'll ever truly be able to enjoy the fruits of their labor. The dream of owning a home, once associated with security and stability, most of the time feels just like a never-ending marathon. As you navigate this journey, it's crucial to consider the trade-offs that are involved. While home ownership offers the prospect of building equity and having a place to call your own, it can also lock you into a cycle of long-term debt and constant financial pressure. The reality is that many individuals find themselves working tirelessly to meet their mortgage obligations, potentially at the expense of pursuing other dreams or passions. Balancing the desire for home ownership with the need for financial flexibility is a challenge that many face in today's housing market. So what can be done to address this situation? It's clear that a re-evaluation of housing policies and financial strategies is needed. Perhaps we need more flexible mortgage options, improved financial education, and increased access to affordable housing. Only by addressing these issues can we hope to make home ownership a dream that enhances our lives rather than one that leaves us feeling trapped even though policymakers are the ones calling the shots.
My mom retired at the age of 53, not because she's rich enough to do so, but rather she was diagnosed with osteoporosis as her C2 and C3 backbones density was in critical condition. And also, she really hated her job, enduring years of corporate demands and hierarchy before finally leaving the corporate world for good. Both of my parents were hardworking and fortunate because we had saved a lot of money for an emergency situation. Without those savings, she couldn't have dared to quit her job, as a significant amount of money was needed for any health-related treatment. And this brings me to the next point, not saving enough for the future. Psychology is often just as important in personal finance as are the numbers. The way we save, spend, and invest are all influenced by the way we think and feel, especially when it comes to preparing for future events like retirement. It can be tough to realize it first, and our brains don't make it any easier for us to get the ball rolling on saving for something that may seem so far away. There are the many psychological pitfalls our minds are subject to when it comes to saving, investing, and taking the actions that will benefit us in the long term. If you're in college or in your 20s, you probably aren't planning to retire for another 40 plus years. And if you're in your 30s, retirement is likely 30 years away. Because of this, it's easy to feel like retirement is so far into the future and that we have plenty of time before we need to start preparing for it. As a result, many would rather treat themselves to things they can enjoy right now instead of stocking away money for a future that's decades away. This thought process is called hyperbolic discounting and it happens when we're more inclined to make decisions that come with a more immediate reward instead of those decisions that come with a future reward. Of course, that's not to say that we should never spend it for enjoyment in the present. Creating a budget can help us figure out how much we can comfortably spend on the things we love now and how much we need to sock away for retirement. Excluding retirement assets, the average American has $65,000 in personal savings, according to a 2023 financial planning and progress study from Northwestern Mutual. $65,000 may sound a lot, but remember that medical bills will hit harder and more frequently as you get older, especially in the US, due to the government's lack of effective healthcare system reforms, making most Americans unable to afford expensive medical treatment, especially for those without comprehensive insurance coverage, which pushes the choice of working until they die as the only viable option as they would receive medical benefits as an employee. I think this is the most significant financial crisis in the post-war period. There are fears the sell-off will continue on Wall Street. Soaring gas prices, falling home prices, and rising unemployment. Economic downturns, those unavoidable storms on the financial horizon, have an uncanny ability to cast a long, shadowy cloud over the dreams of retirement for many individuals. In the wake of economic crises, the prospect of working until the very end of one's life becomes an unfortunate and, for some, an inescapable reality. One of the most profound ways in which economic downturns compel individuals to extend their working years is through the erosion of their hard-earned savings. These downturns can lead to stock market crashes, plummeting property values, and a general devaluation of assets. As a result, retirement accounts and investments that were once considered secure often lose their value forcing individuals to delay retirement until their financial portfolios can recover. Unemployment falling 10.2%, the job market slowing but still adding 1.8 million in July, with no deal yet on extending enhanced unemployment benefits, President Trump now hinting at possible executive action. Tonight, unemployment in America has gone from bad to worse. Oh, we came as close as we have ever come in history to a total cardiac arrest not just of the American economy, but the entire world economy. Job insecurity during economic downturns is another formidable obstacle to retirement. Companies struggling to weather economic storms often resort to layoffs, downsizing, or reduced hours for their employees. 
This leaves many workers grappling with uncertainty about the stability of their employment and their ability to contribute to their retirement funds. For those already close to retirement, the fear of unemployment during a recession can be especially daunting, making the decision to work longer a matter of necessity. Another point to make is that economic crises can disrupt the plans of those who had set aside funds for retirement. Unexpected medical expenses, home foreclosures, or financial support for family members who have also been affected by the downturn can deplete your retirement savings, rendering the prospect of leaving the workforce an unattainable luxury. In a world where the concept of retirement and financial security once held great appeal, a disheartening reality has surfaced. A large majority of individuals now face the possibility of working well into their later years. This predicament often arises from inherent flaws within the financial system. Nevertheless, it is crucial to acknowledge that there exist strategies that individuals can employ to navigate these challenges and secure a more promising retirement. The traditional concept of retirement, characterized by leisure and relaxation in one's later years, has grown increasingly elusive for many. The reasons behind why most people find themselves toiling away well into their old age can be traced back to a financial landscape where the scales have been tilted against the average person. Foremost among these systematic imbalances is the stark contrast between the privileged few and the rest of society. The wealthy elite, possessing the means and influence to navigate financial storms unscathed, benefit from a system where they can seemingly print their own money through political connections and financial maneuvering. In times of economic crisis, central banks often rush to the aid of the financial titans, effectively shielding them from the devastating consequences that befall the ordinary citizens. Meanwhile, it is the average worker, the backbone of any nation, who bears the brunt of the financial crises. These individuals witness their savings evaporate, their job security crumble, and their hopes of retirement fade into the distance. The financial system's biases and inconsistencies create a grim reality in which the rich remain resilient and protected, while the citizens, the very lifeblood of the economy, are left to pick up the pieces. However, individuals are not entirely powerless in the face of these challenges. By cultivating multiple streams of income, saving diligently, and investing wisely, many can navigate the complexities of the modern financial landscape. But it is truly unfortunate that not everyone can achieve financial stability. In our world, it often seems that the less fortunate are expected to contribute to the wealth of others. While the challenges are real, strategic financial management offers a path away from a future where working until one's twilight years is the only option.